In this video, we're going to be using the Fisher projections to determine the enantiomers, diastereomers, apimers, and meso compounds. So, start out with enantiomers going to be the non superimposable mirror images. What that really means is if you put a right hand in front of the mirror, what you see inside the mirror is going to be your left hand. And the right hand and left hand, they are not superimposable on one another. However, they are mirror images of one another. And you can talk about the shoes as well. If you put your left foot shoes in front of the mirror, what you see inside the mirror is the right foot shoe. And they're not superimposable on one another. However, they are mirror images of one another. So that's, they are going to be the easiest one to recognize. So what that uh, really means when you put a sugar in front of the mirror and if if two sugars you're comparing are an anti-merge they just going to be their stereochemistry is just going to be flipped and I'll, I'll take some examples to clarify things here if you have two stereoisomers they are not in an merge then very likely they're going to be the diastereomers for something to be diastereomers you are gonna have to have at least two chiral centers. You could have more than two, but you have to have at least two chiral carbons, and they are not going to be mirror images of one another. Now, the apimer is a type of diastereomer where there is going to be a mismatch only at one location. All right, so usually for something to be considered apimer, you would have three chiral centers or more. All right, and on those three chiral centers, there is going to be a mismatch on the chirality of only one center. And then meso is going to have an internal plane of symmetry where uh, one side of the symmetry, uh, one side of the plane is going to be the mirror image of the other side of the plane. And I'll take some examples here and it will clarify things. So let's say I have the some of these molecules written uh, drawn out. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be trying to find the relation between the pairs. All right. So, for example, in this first one, I have compound A, the structure A, and structure structure one, and the structure A. I'm trying to figure out what the relation is going to be between those two. So, like I said earlier, the easiest and the very first one you want to kind of aim into if they are the enantiomers or not. And uh, to figure out the enantiomer, just draw out a mirror in front of, in between those two. So let's suppose this is the mirror, and the question you want to ask yourself is one the mirror image of A. And if this was the mirror image, then everything should have been flipped. For example, this OH that's on the first, car on the second carbon here. So if I number these carbons on the left, one, two three, four, five, six. So you have chiral centers at the second, third, fourth, and fifth carbon. And those positions must be flipped on the other structure to make that a, an antimer. So when I look, however, this OH, which is on the right side at the second position in structure one, is still on the right side in structure A. So it's not really flipped. So that means it's not an enantiomer. So that's that's how simple it's going to be. If you don't really see um, the inversion there, then it's not going to be an enantiomer. Then you move on to determine whether it's going to be a diastereomer or it's going to be an apimer. And then, now since it's not an enantiomer, I'll just kind of take out this right there. Now you want to see how many mismatches you got there. All right, so this OH is on the right side at the second carbon, and on the second carbon in compound A as well, the OH is on the right side. Uh, on the third carbon, the OH is on the left side. The OH is on the left side here, so that's fine. So so far they are matching one another. On the fourth carbon, the OH is on the right side, but on the fourth carbon. In structure A, the OH is on the left side. So there is a mismatch here. So I'm going to kind of circle that. So there's one mismatch so far. And then on the fifth carbon, the OH is on the right side. And we have the same story in structure A. And then you don't really have to worry about anything that's not chiral center. Like first carbon and the sixth carbon, they're not the chiral center. So you don't really have to worry about uh, how they are oriented. They can, you can rotate those around however you want. 
Okay, so there is actually only one mismatch in there. So they, they are not an anti merge, and there is only one mismatch in there. So they are going to be diastereomer merge, but you have to be a little bit specific what type of diastereomer. And what we said earlier, if you, if there isn't a diastereomer, there is going, and there is only one difference in the chiral center, then they're going to be the apimers. So the relation between those two is that they're going to be apimers of one another. Okay, all right, let's look at uh, 1 and B. So it's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and figure out uh, all these things on your own. So in 1 and B, again, try to figure out if they're going to be the mirror images of one another. So if I draw a mirror here, and let's see if structure 1 is a reflection of structure B. So the OH is on the right side, so you should have OH on the left side on structure B, so you do have that. The H is on the right side on the next carbon there, and that should have been on the left side in structure B, but you don't have that. It's uh, it's still on the right side, so that means they are not an intimers. They are not mirror images of one another, so I'm going to take out this mirror here. Now you're just going to be seeing how many mismatches you got. So there is one mismatch here, the OH are not oriented the same way. Uh, the second one looks fine, the OH, they are both on the left side. On the third chiral center, there isn't a mismatch again, the OH is on the right side, and the OH here is going to be on the left side. And then on the fourth one, there is going to be a match there, both of the OHs on the right side. So since there is two mismatches in there, we're going to be calling these diastereomers. You don't call those apimers because they are two mismatches. So you call those apimers only if there is one mismatch. Okay. All right. So what about this one and C here? You want to be careful with the the structure and the number of car carbon atoms and everything and it seems like uh, the functional group is different there there is an aldehyde functional group and then you got this CH2OH there so it turns out this is not going to be the same compound because the number of carbons would be the same in both of them but the number of hydrogens are going to be different you got two extra hydrogens there Okay, so since you have two extra hydrogens, they have a different formula technically, and if they have different formula, they're going to be different compounds, so they're not really isomers of one another. Okay, I do want to focus just a little bit on the C. C actually has an internal plane of symmetry, so if I just copy this down and maybe bring it down here. If I draw a line right there, then the top part of the molecule is the mirror image of the bottom part of the molecule. If I focus on this chiral center right there and uh, right inside the mirror is going to be this chiral center, so both of those OHs are going to be on the same side. They are mirror images of one another. And you can see the OH here and the OH here, they're also going to be mirror images of one another. And the bottom line is this whole group right there is going to be the mirror image of that group on the top. And this is what the uh, internal plane of symmetry is. So if you have an internal plane of symmetry, then you're going to be calling that particular compound it is meso compound. So this is going to be a meso. So don't fall in the meso trap. Always look for if there is an internal plane of symmetry. And there are some other ways you can tell. But when you're looking at fission projections, it's actually relatively simple. All you really got to look for if the top and the bottom is the same. And in other cases, it was not because on the top you had an aldehyde group and on the bottom you have this uh, CH2OH group. So they were not the same in that case. Okay, let's look at uh, 1 and D there. Okay, so in 1 and D, again, there is a different functional group, actually. So this one has an aldehyde functional group. And this has an ketone functional group. 
So one of them is actually in a glucose and the other one is in a fructose. So they both actually have the same formulas, but one is um, has a ketone functional group and the other one has an aldehyde functional group. What that really means, their connectivity is different. So if their connectivity is different, what type of isomers do they make? That's right, that's constitutional isomers. Now we can also call those functional group isomers because they have different functional groups, but the bottom line is they're not stereoisomers because their connectivity is different. Uh, this last one, 1 and E, so let's see what's going on here. So again, the first thing you want to check for if they are mirror images of one another. So if I draw a mirror here, so let's just uh, check if everything or all the chiral centers are flipped. On this uh, first chiral carbon, on compound one, the OH is on the right side, so in compound E should have been on the left side, so it is on the left side. And keep in mind, everything else is the same. The CHO, the aldehyde groups are oriented on the same side. That's another thing you have to kind of make sure. What that really means, you don't want to have the CHO on the bottom. Like the CH2OH needs to be on the bottom in that case to make sure you are comparing one another with proper orientation. On the next one, next chiral center, let's call this, so if I number these carbons, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So on the third carbon, which is going to be your second chiral center, the H is on the le right side, so it should have been on the left side in compound E, which in this case it is. And uh, the OH is on the right side at, the car uh, at carbon number 4, which is car chiral center 3. Uh, the OH is on the right side, so it should be on the left side in compound E, which in this case it is. And then in comp uh, in five carbon, fifth carbon here, you got the OH on the right side, so the OH should be on the left side. That is the case as well. So that's why it's actually going to be an enantiomer. Everything is flipped, and there are mirror images of one another, so they are going to be the enantiomers. Okay, so when you're trying to figure out uh, if you have, if you're going to have an enantiomers or diastereomers or apimers, it's relatively easy when you are given your Fisher projections. If you're not given the Fisher projection, then you have to rely on their RNS configurations, and uh, we're not going to be talking about the RNS configurations here. Uh, just relying on the Fisher projection to figure out these different types of uh, stereoisomers. In addition to that, you also want to make sure that your functional groups are oriented on the same side, like your ketone and aldehyde is usually going to be on the top and then your CH2OH group is going to be on the bottom. And Sometimes if, they are, if it's on the bottom, then you're going to have to rotate the molecule by 180 to get them on the top and then you compare them with one another. Alright, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments in the section below.